Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in the beautiful Nashville studios. And today, we're going to talk about dry fire practice and why it's so important and how you can get the most out of it. Because I believe that dry fire practice is the master skill that will make you a better shooter. Without a doubt. I mean, the best shooters in the world dry fire. And I'm talking handgun, shotgun, and rifle. The ability to manipulate the firearm, to mount the firearm, and then to see the sight is much more than just pulling the trigger, all right? The really, the, the ability to, to do that in a, a repetitive and consistent way, it takes dry fire practice. And you actually will be better if you do dry fire than trying to do live fire all the time because dry fire eliminates the bang and all that. You can really focus on your fundamentals. So, um, dry fire practice, as I said, is very important. And I had been doing it for years, and, and one of the things that I noticed with the Glock handgun, because it's a single shot, in a sense, a single fire uh, before you have to uh, rack the slide when you're dry firing, and I'll demonstrate that now. This is a Glock 17. I'm going to drop the magazine. It is empty. I'm going to peek inside, and the gun is empty, so now I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger in a safe direction. Now I know I've got a, a safe and an unloaded firearm. By the way, there's no ammunition in this room. There's no ammunition on this table. And I recommend when you're doing dry firing that you're really adamant about separating ammunition away from you, uh, making sure that you uh, don't have any loaded magazines floating around or even within hand or uh, uh, a walking reach. You know, just get them out of the way because it's so easy to load the gun and forget that it's loaded. And that's when most accidents happen. All right, so we're talking about dry fire. And with the Glock, when you get on the gun, come up, present, see the sight picture, squeeze. It's good because you are able to see the sight picture, which is very important. See what happens to the sight as you depress the trigger. Very important, okay, because that's what you're trying to see. You're trying to see at the point of engagement, as you're pulling the trigger, what kind of motion does the, uh, the sight have and where exactly is the sight when you do that. Now, it's interesting, uh, you know, when you do this a lot, you'll start to see that, ooh, I pulled the sight a little bit this way or I pushed it a little bit that way. Uh, and that's when you can start to call your shot. So I, I do recall when I was uh, doing a video with David Tubb, uh, world famous rifle shooter, uh, champion, NRA champion, rifle shooter, 600 yard shots. We were doing a video and he would say, ooh, I pulled that a little bit to the left uh, at two o'clock or, you know, three o'clock or whatever it was. And, um, and I'd say, wow, you know, I mean, how do you know that? Because it's 600 yards away. He said, well, I just know. And then they spot the target, and there it was. He, had, he, he was able to call his shots because he was so dialed in as to where that front sight was as the gun went bang. Now, with handguns, of course, it's a little bit closer. Uh, but the same principle is, is, uh, applies is that you can, with practice and really training your mind, and that's what dry fire does. It trains your mind, not just your physical body, but you train your mind to really pay attention to the sights as you engage the trigger. So, uh, like I said, with the Glock, what, what happens with the Glock is when you pull the slide back, of course, you rack the slide, you pull the trigger, you have to rack the slide again to get another trigger pull. And uh, after doing that 10 or 20 or 30,000 times, I felt, you know, this has got to be a better way to get dry fire practice with a Glock. Uh, 1911, you can actually just, you know, cock the uh, hammer, of course, you know, and, and do the same. But still, you don't have that ability to go from target to target as you would in, say, competition shooting. And that's what I was, I was dry firing practicing for is, you know, I want to be fast with the gun. I want to be uh, efficient, but I also want to be able to move the gun from target to target and maintain my sight picture or be able to acquire that sight picture fast. And again, that's where you train your mind. Because the faster you can see the front sight, that sight picture, the faster you can shoot. So that again, just takes practice. So we're back to dry fire practice and making it better. And so what I did way back, you know, maybe almost 25 years ago, uh, is I invented uh, the reset trigger for a Glock. And it's really, really cool. Uh, here's uh, my original Glock 19 with my reset trigger. Uh, uh, this gun, uh, I've shot, you know, hundreds of thousands of dry fire rounds through. Uh, but what it allows you to do is pull the trigger and then pull the trigger again. And um, I've paired it with a, a laser that allows me to 
engage multiple shots, pay attention to that front sight and the sight alignment and sight picture. As I stroke the trigger, I can see what kind of movement is on the trigger, but the laser then talks to you in a sense. It shows you where that shot would go. So the ability to tie all these together is what we're going to talk about here today, how you can maximize your dry fire practice, maximize your ability to become a better shooter. And then when you go to the range, everything you learn, everything you do here with this dry fire system will become applicable at the range. And so I guarantee if you dry fire and you use this system, you will become a better, faster, more accurate shooter. Without a doubt, I guarantee it 100%. So today I want to show you how to install the reset trigger in your Glock. And we've got them for every model of Glock. And then I'm going to you, show you how to pair it up with, your, uh, with a laser that we sell as well. The laser is really cool because, again, it allows you to see your results. So when you're dry firing without a laser, it feels good. It looks good. But there's always in the back of your mind, was the shot perfect? Did I see everything? Did it really go exactly how I wanted it to go? And that's what uh, the laser does. It tells you that, yes, you did, because you can sit up and, and, and access the target and squeeze the trigger, and you can see the laser on the target. Now, a lot of people say, well, you should be looking at your front sight. Well, yes and no. You know, I mean, I, I agree. Front sight, front sight, front sight. That's where your focus is. Target's in the background. But at, at certain distances and at certain speeds, you're not really going to be looking at the front sight as much as putting the front sight in front of your line of sight and you're looking at the target. So now, once you train yourself, especially with this uh, laser system, you focus on the target, you bring the gun and the front sight to your focus, to in, in your field of view, and you engage the trigger. So you really don't pause on the front sight as much as you focus on your target and then you bring the gun and the front sight into that field of view and squeeze the target or squeeze the trigger and then engage the target and that's how you can shoot faster and multiple targets now of course for precision shots you really want to focus on that front sight uh, but for a lot of the combat and uh, competition style shooting we like to do that i like to do fast and really furious in a sense uh, and everything's relatively close in uh, 10 yards and in, you know, it's really about indexing and putting that front sight in front of your face and having the confidence to know that you've got it pre-aligned, that when you come up here, the front sight is already pre-aligned in the rear sight and the front sight is intersecting with my line of sight to the target. So that means that wherever I look, I can actually hit the target. All right, so there's a whole bunch of theory about why you should dry fire. I think if you have any uh, time in shooting, you're thinking about you know, becoming a better shooter, you've probably heard about dry firing. It's, I've got several different videos on dry firing I, I would encourage you to watch as well. Uh, this video, I want to go ahead and show you the installation of this reset trigger because I think it makes your, your uh, dry fire practice so much faster, so much better, so much more fun because you can engage multiple targets, boom, 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 and do multiple shots and when you tie it up with, uh, say, a reactive target that actually beeps, it's a whole lot of fun. And uh, then you can make a game out of it, get people in there, use timers and stuff. It's really fun. These, uh, these uh, targets actually have uh, some time built into them, so you can do some different games and all kinds of fun things. But uh, like I said, right now, let's go ahead and show you how to do the uh, installation of the reset trigger. Uh, this is a standard Glock. You can do it on any Glock, really. We have got it for just about every Glock uh, uh, made, every model. Um, of course, the gun is unloaded, and I do want you to notice that I put the gun down. No one else has been here, but I did, by habit, check it. And I encourage you to do the same. Every time you pick a gun up, check it. Boom, boom. Okay, now you know it's safe. We're going to go ahead and do a simple disassembly on here. There's really two to three parts of this uh, reset trigger that are very important. One, there's the upper parts, uh, which would be your striker. And you'll notice the striker is a little different than your factory striker by design. So, and I'll show you the difference when we pull them out. Then you have your lower parts, which is the uh, trigger assembly uh, with the trigger housing. And these are uh, uh, basically modified Glock parts. So they uh, will not fire live ammo, designed not to fire live ammo, but they are designed to work with the laser and work with reset. The reset trigger allows you to do multiple shots and not have to rack the slide. So 
All right, let's go ahead and do the disassembly. I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to wrap it around the top, pull back just a little bit to disengage the slide from the slide lock, and then pull the slide lock down, which is also known as the takedown lever, uh, on both sides and hold it down on both sides. And as I, as I walk the slide off, I want to maintain it and pull it straight off, and that's the upper and lower. Lower frame, upper slide. So let's do the upper real quick. I will put the uh, striker in real quick, okay? So you don't have to really take anything else apart. Uh, I could take the barrel out and all that, but I'm, I don't need to. I'm just gonna go ahead and work with the uh, striker. Uh, if you're new to this procedure, uh, one of the things I wanna point out to you is uh, underneath the slide here, you'll see the striker lug or the firing pin lug. That's this piece right here, all right? Underneath that, I'm gonna go ahead, it's in the fired position now, so it's forward. Underneath that, I'm going to pick it up a little bit. Now it's in the back position. It's not, the, the firing pin is not breaching or, or coming through the breech face, the hole in the breech face. You'll notice really close in here, and I don't know if you can get how close you can get and see, there's a little piece of black plastic there. That is called a spacer sleeve. And in order to take the slide cover plate off, I need to remove the pressure from the spacer sleeve. It's spring activated. So I'll just go ahead and set the... Uh, Slide down here on my blue tape ar armorer's uh, donut, I call, and I'm going to bring my punch up to that black sleeve, and I'm going to push it down. You'll notice it's spring activated. Oops. So I just popped it out of there. Okay. So now when I take this and I push it down, I'm taking pressure off of the back cover plate, the back slide cover plate, they call it. So that allows me then to thumb that off. Otherwise, it's kind of locked in there. I mean, you can force it off, and I've seen guys force it off with, you know, tools and all kinds of stuff, and they end up scarring and scratching this thing. There's no need to do that. Uh, basically, just take the pressure off this thing, and it's going to come off with your thumb, just like that. Now, be careful that you keep your thumb over top as you walk this off, because it's spring-activated in there, and I have seen some parts fly away. Uh, namely, the um, extractor depressor plunger uh, that thing sometimes will just take off. And then that's a tiny little black part that, you know, sometimes it just disappears on your carpet. You never find it. The gun won't work without it. <laughs> so you want to maintain those parts. Now, uh, here's the factory striker. I'm going to pull the whole striker assembly out. That's what they call the striker assembly or, or firing pin assembly. There's the spacer sleeve we talked about. This is the spring, the firing pin spring. The actual firing pin itself. The Glock has uh, the Glock Gen 3s have a blade. The Gen 5s have more of a of a traditional uh, point uh, for the firing pin. And this is uh, uh, up here the spring cups. And there's actually two pieces of plastic that go like this and actually capture that. And I've got a ton of videos showing you the disassembly, reassembly of these things, and no need to do it here. Uh, what I do want to show you, though, is that uh, in order for this uh, longer striker to work, you'll see that this is the reset striker. This is the factory striker. You see how much longer it is. That's why it resets. It's one of the tricks that we, we developed. In order for it to work, uh, uh, it, will, uh, it has to be longer. But also, I want you to notice, too, one of the uh, things we took out are the safety mechanisms because it's not designed to fire live fire. So it's really important you understand that. Uh, this uh, Glock factory has a lot of cutouts here uh, that uh, prevent the gun from firing unless you're actually pulling the trigger. The firing pin will not go forward because it won't go past the safety plunger unless you're pulling the trigger, which depresses the safety plunger and moves it out of the way. And that's one of the safeties built into a Glock. Uh, on this particular firing pin for the reset striker, it does not have that safety feature because you don't need it because you can't fire live ammunition with it. Now, the safety plunger has to come out. That's kind of where I was going with that, because this thing sits down here farther, and the safety plunger, this doesn't have the cutouts for the safety plunger. It will not go in. If I try to put it in right now, I'm going to get to about here, and it's going to stop. It's going to be, why is it not going? Okay, what's wrong? Well, it's actually touching that. If I look and just see, you can see that it's, it's starting to intersect with it. So. That said, I take the safety plunger out very simply by 
pulling back on the, de uh, the extractor depressor plunger, just pull that rod back a little bit. It's going to take some pressure off of the extractor. And then I'm going to go ahead and just pull the extractor out just a little bit and it will drop out. So uh, one, I want to depress the safety plunger with my finger. There goes the extractor. And now the safety plunger is going to come right out by itself. And usually I can just turn it upside down and it falls out. So this is the safety plunger. I will put it down here on the floor or the table so you can get a better shot of it. There's the factory striker. The extractor, I can leave in there and just so you can see what the extractor looks like. An extractor is the claw that grabs the round and pulls it out. What's really interesting, all these little tiny parts the gun won't work with any, without, if you miss one of them, the gun won't work. So you got to be very careful not to lose them. All right, so uh, now what I've got here is I've got the extractor to plunger rod, which is a big steel rod with a spring on it with a plastic cap. Steel goes in first into the hole. There's a tiny little hole here in the back of the uh, slide. It just can stay there. And that's going to capture my extractor in there because it pushes on the extractor. Okay, so the extractor has a barrel on it right here, and that barrel goes into the gun. And so I drop it in just like that. And once it's there, kind of straighten it out, and I push this extractor depressor plunger all the way in, and it captures it because it holds it. All right, so that's kind of, you can see it poking out right here. And that's that rod coming down here and sitting there basically like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to put the reset striker firing pin into, and you'll notice without the safety plunger, it's going to go in all the way. And it's going to live like that. You can see how this spacer sleeve sticks out a little farther because, again, it's a longer striker. Now, to reassemble and put the slide cover plate back on, there's one thing I need to do before I do that, and that is to install what we call our rebound springs. And the rebound spring is just a tiny little spring. It's very important though because it does make the gun click and work better. This rebound spring goes under or in back of, should I say, the um, firing pin in the hole of the um, spacer sleeve. So I take this little pin, this little spring, I'm going to drop it into this hole and I want to make sure that it doesn't go sideways on me. And as I drop it in there, oops, it went sideways. So now let me get my little punch here. I'll pull it out. And one of the ways we can do it, and I had, I, I've done it in the past, is kind of put it on your punch a little bit. Get it started. And now it's sitting there, I'm just going to push it down. And there you go. Okay, so that just sits there, just round and uh, right on top of the striker. The striker's right here, that uh, spring sits right there. And now we're going to put our slide cover plate back on. And a lot of people, you know, uh, have some trouble with this, but it's pretty easy if you do it uh, the way I'm about to show you. So you take your slide cover plate and you kind of stage it right there. Grab a punch or ballpoint pen or the back of the pen. You can use the back of it. Something rather large because this is a large piece. And push the spacer sleeve down all the way. And then capture it with the slide cover plate. Just push it on with your thumb. Now you'll have the extractor depressor plunger sitting right there. That's a little smaller piece. It's got a little plastic detent right there. So I'm going to push that down with a little smaller punch. And I push it down, and as I push it down, I push the slide cover plate up and pull them out, and then push it right in like that, all with my thumb. So I'm pushing it down, and I just push it in. So now I've got the reset striker installed in the upper. Pretty simple. You can do it in really two or three minutes. I know I talked through it and made it a long time, but it's not. All right, so now we're going to work on the lower, and we're going to put the trigger in. So... A lot of people uh, have not taken the gun apart 
like this as far as the low part. So it's pretty simple. I've got a ton of other videos that I've done it before, but I'm going to walk you through this again. If you've seen it before, you can fast forward. There are three pins in this particular gun. Most of the new guns, the Gen 5 guns, have two pins. Uh, the three pins in the Gen 3 gun that I'm about to show you are the trigger pin, the locking block pin, and the trigger housing pin. A couple things on getting the trigger pin out. Keep in mind, it is captured by the slide stop, also known as a slide release. Captured in a sense that this slide stop has a ring, a hole, and that hole and the spring of the slide stop capture the pin into that notch on the pin itself. So it's very difficult to just punch that thing out or push it out unless you take some of that pressure off of the, um, uh, the pin itself. So the way to do that is I'm going to take a punch. And this is a, a larger punch. Uh, Glock, you, you can take the Glock apart with a, a 332nd punch, all the pieces and parts. That's what this guy is, the smaller one here. This one's just a little, little larger because this is a, um, a, a larger pin. Uh, I would not recommend using this on the other holes because it's too big. But I'm going to use it for this one because it's easier for me to get some pressure on it uh, because it's just a bigger piece. The secret to this is to manipulate this slide stop as you push pressure on that. Now again, I've got a, just a roll of tape here. It's nice and easy. I've got a place for my pin to drop in. I won't lose the pin. That's very important. And I um, also you know, can put the Glock right on top of that. And because it's just tape, it's not going to damage or mar the surface or scratch or, or dent or do anything like that. So when I go ahead and put my punch, and here's the method. I'm going to put my punch in my hand with my thumb on top of it. I'm going to put myself right here like that. I'm going to put a little bit of body weight on it, and then I'm going to manipulate this, and it comes out relatively easy. That was really easy. Uh, look at that. And there's the pin right there. And I, I've done this two or three times. The first time you do it, it's not quite as easy. Uh, that one was really easy, so I almost cheated there. I apologize. Uh, now, take my smaller punch, the 332nd. Now, this is really important for these other holes because they're smaller because you don't want to use a big punch on these other holes. I could force it in there, but it would not be pretty. Locking block pin comes out the same way. Just go ahead and lean on it a little bit, and it'll come out. And there it is. And I'm going to drop it right into the donut hole so I don't lose it. Trigger housing pin, same way. Just lean on it. Out it comes. Now pull it out. So the locking block's got to come out first. I'll just take my punch and just pry that up a little bit. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. And here it comes, and I'm just going to dump it right into my donut hole. And voila, there's your locking block. And here's your other pins. Here's that trigger pin I was talking about where it has the uh, actual uh, notches in it. This is the locking block pin. And this is the trigger housing pin. The trigger housing pin is actually plastic. These other two are steel. Okay, so now I'll just take the slide stop out. Just pull that out. And there's the hole I was talking about, by the way. You see the hole right there? And uh, let's just show you something real quick. This is how it gets captured on one of these notches. Just like that. So when you're manipulating it, you're kind of pushing it back and forth to try to get it out of the notch, and then it just, it'll come out. Okay. Now I've got all the pins out. I've got the locking block out. I can just grab hold of the trigger housing with the ejector uh, here and pull it straight up. And here comes the factory trigger assembly. You can just leave it just like this, too. You don't have to mess with it and do anything else. You can take it apart, but you don't need to. Because uh, when you do this reset trigger, if you're going back and forth between live fire and uh, the reset, uh, you want to change it and you want to just, you don't want to leave the reset trigger uh, unless you're going to dedicate a gun to it. You want to be able to turn into reset trigger and then when you're done, turn it back to a live fire and then you have it, you know, stored as a live fire gun. Uh, unless you devote a gun to the reset trigger, I would probably not recommend using the reset trigger uh, or putting the reset trigger as uh, kind of a standard uh, operating procedure. So uh, just put it in and out is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, okay, so there's the whole trigger housing. Now we're going to take the reset trigger housing 
And this is how it comes to you, all set and ready to go. And we're just going to drop it in. And everything's basically the same, except we modified uh, the spring so that when you squeeze the trigger, it just resets itself. And you'll see how it works. It's really cool. So I'm going to drop it in. Voila. And uh, make sure it's set. Okay. Looks good. Holes line up well. Everything looks great. Okay. Holes back here. Holes up here. Go ahead and I can drop my locking block back first. And now here's a mistake a lot of people make. At this point, before you put any pins in, the first pin, especially, you know, again, for Gen 3 and Gen 4 guns, the first pin you're going to put in would be the locking block pin. Because we want to capture the spring on the slide stop underneath the locking block pin. So I got to be aware that this spring needs to go under the locking block pin. And that means I've got to put the locking block pin in first. Now I've got a little hammer here. Part of my punch set has a nylon edge to it, a nylon uh, uh, a mallet. And I can go ahead and just use the nylon piece and just tap that in. And uh, you'll notice it gets, uh, you know, it's, it can be trued up a little bit if you want it just to push it in just a little bit more, take your punch and just give it a little pressure so it kind of gives even, even on either side. Kind of cosmetic, but uh, certainly looks good. Now, before I put this trigger pin in, I've got to put the slide stop in. It goes into the slot that's right there next to the, um, uh, the locking block, and, and basically it's part of the trigger mechanism, and right next to the trigger, should I say. And so it goes in just like that. And the main thing I want to do is make sure that when I put it in there, it goes in all the way, and I'm able to line my holes up. Let me see, where is it? There it is. And I line my holes up, and I can look inside there, and yes, I can see a, a nice round hole. Now, because it's on a spring, I may have to hold it in there because that spring wants to push it out. So I hold it in there, I look at it, I can take my punch... And I, I kind of like to do this sometimes, just take my punch and go in here and make sure everything's trued up. Make sure the trigger's in the right spot, everything looks good. Because now, I'm holding the slide stop with my thumb, I've got all the holes are nice and concentric, it looks really like it's, it's perfectly lined up. Do it one more time. And now I'm going to hold it right where it's at, I'm going to take my locking block, or excuse me, my trigger pin, and just push it in with, by hand as far as I can go. And now I'll go ahead and take my nylon hammer and tap it in. Now here's something that's very interesting. If you look at both sides, I've got it in there. It's, it's a little bit below flush here and a little bit more below flush over here. So it's not quite centered up. So I'll take my punch and I'm going to true it up a little bit. And what you may hear, we may hear a click and that click will be when the spring on the slide stop jumps it into the um, notch. And there it was right there. That's all it took. Just a little push because uh, the, the, the pin was not in far enough to be able to engage that circle that was part of that hole that was part of the um, slide stop. So once you push it in, it just, it's going to lock in place. Now it's done basically. All right. Now here's something to watch. I can pull the trigger and it's going to come right back. And that's great. But now, when we put the upper on, remember I've got the upper all complete. Come on, baby, line those up. Upper goes on, everything looks good here. And now, yes, so now there's, I've got a reset trigger. So I can come up and dry fire, bump, 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 and, and really focus on keeping that front sight in the notch and putting that front sight on the target that I wish to hit and putting that sight picture in front of my face to the point where it is already lined up and I'm looking right through it at the target and the sight is just part of it, just like that. So I'm using my right eye, coming straight through front sight, lined up with the rear sight, which is right at the center of that lens. So hopefully you can see my eye right back uh, behind that. Now, 
So like I said, th that was the first rendition. And, and after that, uh, I said, wow, this is really cool. I, 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 I can get multiple trigger uh, uh, pulls in. Uh, I don't have to rack it. I can you know, holster. I can pick it up and, and, and dry fire and go to multiple targets. Uh, but one year, um, gosh, I, it was probably maybe 20 years ago now, at the SHOT Show, uh, a company was there, and they were brand new. And uh, they are called Laser Ammo. And um, they had this really cool device that uh, was a, um, a laser that was the shape or the size of a 9 millimeter. And this is it, basically. And what was cool about it is that on the back side of it is uh, like a little black pad. And this black pad is a rubberized pad. And every time that it gets hit with the striker or, the, or even you could just sit there with a pen and touch it, uh, the laser beam would emit. So I said, I bet that will work with my reset trigger. And sure enough, it does. And it did. And we've sold thousands of these. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited about this, because it's a device that really will help you become a better shooter. So let me go ahead and put the battery in. I want to show you how to do that as well. Uh, it's not hard. It's just a, you got to just keep one thing in mind. So we're going to go ahead and um, unscrew this little cap. Now, I said to you that it's the shape of a 9mm, diameter of a 9mm, so it fits in a 9mm perfectly. Uh, they do have sleeves that will fit 40 caliber as well as 45 caliber and some other ones as well uh, for rifles. So uh, this thing is, is truly awesome. There's also a cap that is constant on. So you can click it and have it go on, and you can use it to sight in, say, a, um, a red dot optic. Really, a, just an amazing device. It, uh, you know, this thing, this little laser, I tell you, you get, you get a lot of mileage out of this. Uh, now, so when you go to install the battery, there's a spring inside this one, uh, this bigger side, and you want to put the negative side down, which is basically, uh, you know, and it doesn't say positive on here. Uh, I don't think it does. Yeah, it does right here. It does say positive on here. So positive side goes up, negative goes down. All right, really important. Pop your screw back on, your cap back on. All right. So now, there is the what I call the magic bullet. Okay, I, I framed, I, I, I coined that phrase a long time ago. Uh, laser ammo. I think you know they they want to be careful not to call it a bullet, but uh, <laughs> uh, it uh, it's pretty cool because it is magic because it's going to make you a better shooter. So now I'm going to go ahead and lock the slide back and drop this in here like so. And then I just work it in with my finger a little bit. And now it will not eject uh, because it doesn't have a case rim to it. So you can rack the slide, you can do all kinds of drills with it and get up and squeeze the trigger. Now you'll see, maybe you'll see, I don't know, there's a laser, yeah, you, you can see it, yes, good. All these lights sometimes mess with it. So now, imagine that you are doing drills and you place just some plain old eight and a half by 11 white paper around your house. Just a eight and a half by 11. I've got one right here. Let me just see what that looks like. So eight and a half by 11, right? Eight and a half by 11, right? Or even five by seven, right? So eight and a half by 11 is a nice, you know, full body uh, uh, center of mass shot. So now you can start to just Bing your targets as you go around, and you can set up a, you can use a shot timer with a part time and say, okay, I'm gonna draw from the holster and engage these three targets in 1.5 seconds or two seconds, whatever the number is. So boom, beep, but dot, 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 and beep. And so you can train yourself to work your draw, work your sight picture, target to target, double taps. And use a timer that way. Or if you want to go and be a little bit more uh, involved with this, Laser Ammo also has a series of targets. And they sell a three-pack. And we, we offer this whole thing as a, as a kit, by the way. Uh, this three-pack is pretty cool. And these targets, um, unfortunately, uh, these lights will, will set them off. I mean, I'll, I'll turn it on for you. You'll see. <laughs> it's, it's a little crazy. Um, the, the, the lights themselves will set off. Like I said, as soon as I point it, that light is going to go off. But the laser, it won't activate it now because the lights are over, overwhelming it. Uh, so the cool thing about these targets is that now you have a, uh, not only a visual, 
but you have an auditory as well. So you can go beep, 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 drive your wife kind of crazy after a while. But uh, what's nice about the targets is they've got a three inch, a five inch. This is a, a, a one fifth scale uh, humanoid target. I mean, it's really awesome. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I've noticed with the um, laser fire is after you get really, you know, you do a little bit and you get really good at it. Uh, you can literally sit here and you could, you could hit this three inch target in a snap draw, basically just boom, from across the room. Because you've trained yourself with the dry fire skill to present the gun so that the sights are pre-aligned, to allow your brain, your mind, your eye to see the target and to bring the gun up into your face. And when it comes up, the sights are already there, so you are now able to just squeeze the trigger. So you'll find with, with repetitive practice that you'll be able to engage these targets or anything in the room, piece of paper, or whatever, whatever you want to be your target, whatever you're looking at, basically. You can engage it in a snap second. You know, really, it's just it's that amazing how dry fire and this reset trigger and this laser all come together to make you that much better of a shooter. Uh, I'm telling you what, uh, I, I cannot tell you, an, uh, as if I trained anybody for anything, I always say dry fire, dry fire, dry fire, because it is the skill, the master skill. And uh, this uh, reset trigger and the uh, laser and these targets, or even just like I said, with a piece of paper, uh, you will find yourself becoming so much faster. Now. I do want to show you one other thing here. In case you need to take it you know, apart and you have trouble pulling the slide off for whatever reason, because some people will have trouble uh, because you have to have the, the firing pin in the fired position. So sometimes they have trouble pulling the slide off. And even that, sometimes that happens with, a, with a, just a normal Glock, you'll have trouble pulling the slide off. Something happens, you're, at, you're kind of confused the gun and all of a sudden you can't get the slide off. Let me show you how to do that. So you lock the slide back, right? And then just stand the gun up and go and just take the slide cover plate off the back. So uh, we don't have to take the slide off. I'm just gonna take the slide cover plate off the back and I'm gonna remove the striker. I'm gonna come up here and push down on the spacer sleeve, walk this off, keep my thumb over top there because I don't want that to fly away. Pull the striker out and now just go ahead and walk this off. Because the striker is what holds it on, typically. So I've seen, you know, sometimes even with, uh, uh, with just regular Glocks, people have trouble getting their, their slide off. Well, just take the striker out. And the striker then uh, will, this is what actually holds it in there, right here. So, anyways, that's just the, uh, the disassembly. Then you go back and, and reassemble the other parts, just like we did backwards. So you can actually put your striker in. Get it started down there a little bit. And then before we do that, we're going to put our safety plunger in as well. So let me, I'll go ahead and just do the whole thing for you real quick here. So we'll buzz through this. We'll get our safety plunger in here. Now, when you put your safety plunger back in, you got to capture it with the extractor. So to do that, what we're going to go ahead is we're going to push down on the safety plunger all the way, put our extractor in and then let the safety plunger go. And it'll capture both pieces. They kind of capture themselves. Then I can go ahead and take my extractor depressor plunger, drop it all the way in the hole there, all the way down, take my striker, factory striker, right? Put it back in. Now go back to our slide cover plate. Go ahead and stage it just like I did before. Take my punch. Push this down, that being the uh, spacer sleeve. Smaller punch onto the extractor depressor plunger. Hold it down, and that's basically the upper, that quick. Lower, same concept, okay? We're going to go ahead and uh, just take our pins out. Um, this pin got captured. Remember, we, we captured it, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, manipulate the slide stop Get on top of the trigger pin. Now this one's a little tougher because it captured, but it got it out right there like that. Here comes the slide stop. Let's go ahead and take this uh, locking block pin out. 
They're both sitting here waiting for me to grab them. All right, I already took the uh, trigger housing pin. It was out, and I never put it back in, to be honest. And then here comes your locking block. Whole mechanism comes out. Put it back in a box. Okay. Now, reassemble. First thing first, trigger goes in. Just drops straight in, right? Always want to make sure you get that all the way down. You'll hear a nice click on the, on the factory. Okay, my holes look like they're all lined up. Everything looks good. This would be the locking block next. Okay. Remember, we're going to put our locking block pin in first. Okay. And now uh, we'll go with our slide stop. Kind of find a home for it there. There you go, right there. Got to hold it in place. I want to look inside, make sure that hole is nice and round. I don't have anything intersecting there. Take my uh, trigger pin, push it in as far as I can with my hand. Take my punch or my mallet, do it there. Let me go ahead and true that up. Let's see if we can hear it click this time. There it was, big click. I heard it. Dump. I hope you heard it. That's actually, like I said, the slide stop uh, engaging. And then to go ahead now with my trigger pin, trigger housing pin, should I say, and then tap that in. And that's the one that I always like to true up a little bit. Okay, and now here comes the upper. Now we're back to a live fire gun. Just like that. So, the reset trigger with the magic bullet. It's the most amazing thing, I'm telling you, to improve your shooting. I cannot tell you enough about it. I've used this thing for years. It, uh, it lasts for a long time. Now, we'll show you one other thing. It does come with what they call safety, safety pipe. And I recommend you use it when you're actually dry firing. Because then people will see that, okay, wow, he is dry firing. That gun is not real, and I don't have to really think about it. Although you always want to maintain the safety standards of keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction, knowing your target, what's beyond it, making sure there's no ammunition in the room, making sure that you are uh, not pointing the gun at anybody or anything you don't want to shoot. All right, that's really important. You never play with this uh, because this is a real gun. Even though it's got the reset trigger in it and it's got uh, you know, a laser bullet in it, it doesn't mean that you want to point it at people. You don't want to get in that habit. So that's really important. So uh, I'm a big believer in dry fire. I think you should be too. Uh, we uh, do offer this, like I said, in three different ways. You can buy the reset trigger itself. You can buy it with the laser. Or you can buy the whole thing with all the targets as a kit. It's a great way to go. Uh, it makes a great gift too because uh, whoever uh, is a shooter in your life, uh, they would love to have something like this. And like I, said, like I said, there's accessories to make it for 40 and 45. There's other accessories for the cap. Uh, there's an IR accessory uh, for uh, uh, certain laser games and all that stuff. So there's a, a whole bunch here that you should, uh, uh, you know, kind of explore to make yourself a better shooter. I'm Lenny McGill. This, of course, is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. We are in Nashville, Tennessee now, and we love it here. <laughs> Moved out of California, of course, uh, loving the business here. Uh, it, the store's doing great. I've got a great store. We're right off the 65 and the 40 freeway, so you got to come see us. The 24 goes right by. We, we get a lot of traffic, a lot of people coming by. The airport is two miles away. People fly into Nashville. They always stop in here. I'm encouraging you to do the same either on the way in or the way out. Uh, the store's phenomenal. The ranges are phenomenal. The people we have working here are phenomenal. You're phenomenal for watching. Thank you. We'll see you next time.